the left hand one here, okay, I think was your second swing, the robotic one you said was a yeah, little bit yeah. kind of structured or a bit manipulative, okay? Now, if we watch as the club kind of goes back, okay? Yeah. Come here. There we go, okay? So as you start going back now, okay? We get a zoom in there. You watch your leg movement already, but the club gets to about here, okay? That club's a long way behind. There's already daylight now between your knees. I reckon the daylight starts coming about there. Yeah. So the club's not even going above your hips, and you've already got knee gap I'm already. Trying to get in that position you're there. trying to get the club one piece and behind you, okay? So once that club gets stuck behind you, the angle you're going to be coming in from now is going to be very much this way, okay? Which produces a lot of that spin, yeah. okay? Or you try and sort of hang on to it massively. Now, we discussed that in the first lesson. When your path wasn't too bad, just get that impact with the right wrist. But what's happened, maybe to try and get that one piece, you sort of come in so far in here now, it creates hookies and different shots, okay? Or, as I said, if the club is coming this direction out this way too far, one, the shaft might just swing way into out, okay? And then you might hit the hosel. Or you'll try and save it, and your arms then come further away from the body, as you're trying to get from in here and going way over the top to... Because yeah. you saw that 10-yard or 20-yard chip you did. It went 10 yards offline. Yeah. When you swung back to this position and just swung through, the ball just went kind of over here somewhere, okay? So comparing that one to this one, okay? You look there now and that club goes back. There's no daylight, is there? I mean, your legs are still... There's still a gap there. If you keep going back. Still no daylight. Now the daylight starts going, which is fine because the club's kind of above your hips and you're starting to turn your yeah, hips as you would yeah. do, which is fair enough, okay? Now the club doesn't go back as far, obviously, but even that move there, okay, compared to. I mean, you're going to fit a rugby ball through that gap there. Yeah. <laughs> okay? Yeah, okay? So if we can just keep them a little bit quiet, the second they start doing too much. Now, the way I look at kind of your lower half, almost like a sort of silent business, uh, business partner, okay? You don't see, them, don't see much work from them and stuff, but if without, without them, you can't survive, yeah? You need them there to try and help you work, but they want to just sort of stay in the shadows, stay out of the way, and, and do, do less is more kind of thing, all right? Okay. The lower half, the same in, uh, in the other way around, like in rugby, for example. Rugby is very much like, you run more football, to be fair, because you catch one in rugby, but when you're running around in football or rugby, you run with your legs and your arms balanced. If you have to run around with your arms stuck to your side, <laughs> you find it very difficult to change direction or use that, because you use your arms as a sort of balance to sort of push off, and then you use it as a balance yeah. point. So golf's the flip side of the way. So your lower half is kind of more supportive. The top half is what is basically swinging the golf club. Yeah, so to get yeah. control of that club, imagine trying to play golf on a trampoline. You'd be like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. if you'd be the best player in the world, you'd still miss it from the shots because you have no stability at all. So the lower half has to support the top half. If it's moving early straight away, if your initial takeaway and the knees have gone like this and the club barely gone above your hips, you're not in a balanced position. Your weight's going on that knee forward. Now, as you start coming back through, you're going to start pushing up off the knee. Your body now is moving one way and t'other. And then whatever your lower half does, your top half does the opposite to compensate. It's like a balanced responder, yeah? If my knees start going this way, my top half goes that way. Otherwise, if I do this, I just fall over. Yeah. So your top half will always kind of recover what you're doing. And I think that one-piece takeaway mentality, completely right, but slightly misinterpreted in terms of stick it in the torso and try and turn together. And what's probably happened is you've stuck it in your belly button there and done that and then just watched it with your head and done this. Yes. When you watch with your head now, your hips are starting, I mean, it's very hard to do that. So it's just here, there, okay? Just move it, basically, in the clock face, for this example, again, the club's at six o'clock now. You're not moving it much before eight o'clock. If you start going nine and 10 and beyond your hip point, <laughs> trying to keep your, everything connected there, you're going too far. So there you go, that's fine, much better. Which is pretty much, if I said to you, chip a ball 10 yards, actually, that's as far as you go back anyway. Well, yeah, you yeah. wouldn't do much leg. You wouldn't chip a golf ball and go, Bloop, and your knees collapse. So a chip shot or a pitch shot for that matter, okay, any sort of short shot that's requiring a small backswing, that is kind of the takeaway of your full swing. And your lower half, you wouldn't be doing that with a, a little chip or, I don't know, a 50-foot putt. You go, Bleep, and the knees start kicking in. So just be mindful of the legs. Get them a bit, more, a bit quieter control in the top half and then your arms and hands can kind of do what they want to do okay yeah, they can yeah. be a bit more responsive actually rather than trying to balance yourself and recover the, the loss of balance they can go okay right well, i can start controlling the club here and there and doing these different things right. and i think you'll find the club gets less behind you once he's behind you Steve, you've got to try and now it, do it, something it didn't feel right yeah but the result was good yeah and i was like nah. yeah exactly it's probably more three wrongs making the right too far behind club face closing up 
alignment was probably slightly out, and then those, those three things clicked together for a set amount of holes, and the ball was going okay, and then what would probably happen is when it was right, it was really good. When it was wrong, it was like, oh, my God, where's that going? Like a big hook or a big block yeah, or whatever yeah. it may be, and no real control of where the ball's going to go. So, okay, okay. okay.